What is up everyone? Let's talk about console emulation. <laughs> Greetings, I'm Black Marvin for Ghost Act and today is time for the third part of our saturation series. Today we talk about the console emulation type of saturation, which is a very subtle but very efficient way to saturate your productions. Again, in the same mindset of part one and part two, which were tube saturation and tape saturation. Um, those type of saturation, they come from hardware and they are translated into digital, but in the end, they want to, um, the plugins want to emulate the behavior of some hardware devices. Um, it's the same with the console emulation, but it's, it's a different result. It's really about uh, simulating the behavior of the sound that passes through an analog console and the idea is to benefit from that whether it's by coloring the sound or just giving life to the sound. I'm gonna show you three plugins today, two different uh, console emulation plugin but there's much more uh, on the market. Waves has one which is called NLS. Um, the uh, Mac DSP company which I see a lot of ad lately they have a, a, a console modeling plugin, uh, which I didn't try it, but sounds really cool. But at some point you have to make your choice because you cannot own them all. Today I'm going to show you analog stage. I'm going to show you also the uh, virtual mix bus by uh, Slate Digital. And finally, our good friend here, Tesla Pro MK2, which we saw in part two. Uh, we're going to use this guy, but now with the British console and the US console, which are console emulation type of saturation and the thing with this one is that, is that it's actually free so I like to push it to you guys because you can start using it right now uh, the thing with analog stage is it's you have to pay for it but it's quite affordable uh, the owner plugins are really affordable and you have finally the uh, the one from Slate Digital is from the virtual mix rack it might be the, the most expensive of all these because it does not come as a unit but it comes with the uh, the virtual mix rack uh, but this this one is really good too but I like to show you a bunch of them and after that you can make your own choice of what you want to apply or not and what we're going to work with today is a, a mix down uh, version of a track I'm working on it's like a, you have some Kind of a stems uh if you if you've watched a couple of ghost x tutorial you know I, I like to work that way kind of a stem mixing technique so it's already groups you have the effects the drums you have some lead groups uh and yeah the kick and bass so i'm gonna go through the mix and apply the console saturation and after that we can compare the dry version and the wet version of the whole mix this is the only processing i'm gonna put so you can really hear the benefit of it Let's start by the kick and bass. Usually I just run uh, the sound through the plugin and I, I take the operational amp model. This is my favorite. Um, this is the, probably the most subtle of all the, the plugins I'm gonna use, but uh, it's, it's everywhere in my productions. Uh, so I'm gonna, just going to go through different, the different models for you. Uh, this time and the on the other groups I'm not going to you know do it again I'm just gonna stick to operational amp but for the sake of it let's hear the differences operation uh, it's, it's it's really subtle uh, to be honest but I, I hear small differences, like the tube one is a bit a bit more like uh, drier and the um, operational amp is a bit warmer. So that's why I stick to the, with the operational amp. Now with the uh, Slate Digital one, I'm going to use the uh, virtual channel instead of the virtual mix bus. But uh, though it behaves a really similar way, it's just this one is meant to, uh, to uh, be put on a channel and the other one is meant to be put on the mix bus. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this one. Uh, you have the drive. Uh, you have different models here and here you have how much you push into the plugin uh, like like always you want to uh, have something decent you don't want to go in, into the red because anyway you're gonna hear it similar to the analog stage it just sound oversaturated but uh, usually I go hard on the drive because it's, it's really subtle
Brit end is a bit fatter in the low end. I'm gonna stick with the Brit end. Like I said, the analog stage is quite uh, subtle, but this one just look uh, what it does when I bypass it. <laughs> so great. And uh, finally, the Tesla. Yeah, why not? Why not the tree? Let's do a happy trio uh, a bit like uh, again. Uh, this kind of tutorial, I I I don't mind kind of overdoing it a bit uh, just to prove make my point and uh, be more sober in terms of when I, when I do my own mix but I really want to showcase the benefit of it It's a bit more bright, a bit more sharp, but without doing doing too much uh, too much brightness and 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 sometimes when you go too bright on stuff, you actually you you lose lose the power because it's too. Yeah, it's it's it, it, it's more bright, it's more sharp, but uh, it, without uh, compromising the definition of it. Sometimes when you go too bright on stuff, you kind of you're just too bright and you you lose you lose some properties of the sound so but this is great and let's just bypass all the plugins at once it's quite a difference here now let's go to the leads i'm gonna do the same process and after that i'm just gonna do the whole mix so this is the lead <laughs> So I have the analog stage and the virtual mix rack. Let's, let's bypass both of these. I definitely they hear the drop in mojo or or vibe when when uh, I remove the plugin when I bypass them. And I'm just gonna give it a bit of uh, Tesla Pro. <laughs> Again, Tesla Pro really subtle, but bring something to the table, which I, which I appreciate. So now I'm bringing you on board. I'm going to do the whole mix. And after that, we can have a final comparison.
I have the analog stage going on and the virtual mix rack going on uh, with the virtual mix bus. Uh, now I'm using the mix bus instead of the channel. Uh, so the whole mix has been console emulated. Uh, let's render a, a dry version and a console emulated version and compare. I have the dry mix at the bottom, which I have nothing going on on it. And I have the wet mix that has console emulation on all the channels and also on the master so that's the difference <laughs> different section just for fun <laughs> If you work sound by sound, sometimes it's harder to hear the difference, but when you compare the whole mixed dry and wet, uh, there's a difference. The wet mix is so alive, uh, it's, also, it's also feels like wider, it feels a bit more 3D, uh, and it's like, it's like everything is hot in there, and the dry mix is really dull, so uh, I think it's it's big by itself. It's from all the uh, saturation process, the console emulation is one of the most subtle, but subtle doesn't mean you, sh you shouldn't put it because uh, in, in the whole mixing and mastering process, it's really like subtle change, subtle change, subtle change. But in the end, when you add all those subtle change, it, it makes a big difference. And if you want to push your production further, you, you will need to start to work in the details because it's all in the details. So I really hope this uh, helps you understand the console emulation process more. I hope that you will start using it in your own production. You can definitely with uh, the Tesla Pro plugin. And uh, like I said, also there's a bunch on the market and it keeps, it keeps uh, coming, popping here and there, new plugins. That was it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for more saturation tutorial coming your way. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe for more content by myself or other Ghost Act producers. And I will see you in another video. Until then, happy console emulation.